This video builds on our prior video talking about the physical layer of data transfer in holiday lighting controllers. Now, we talked about the physical layer, copper wire, in particular Cat5 cable, and we also talked about wireless, but data can also be sent over fiber or optical type cables. Now, the next layer we're talking about, and we briefly touched on it before, was the next layer up, Ethernet and TCP IP, or TCP and technically UDP. All right, we also have this in RS-45. Since the two most common methods of transferring data in holiday lighting controllers are RS-45 for older technologies like dumb controllers and simplified devices, and then at a higher level, we have Ethernet, and Ethernet is used with modern controllers such as this Holiday Coro Evolution controller or Hinx Pix Pro type controller. Okay, so let's go over some of those details. Now, this diagram here shows the connection between these two. So we have OSI, and we can just refer to this as uh, Ethernet. At the bottom level, we have the physical. That is the cable. In our particular case, we were normally talking about CAT5. Now, as we mentioned before, we can send data for RS-45 or even differential controllers such as this, which also use RS-45, over CAT5. Also, Lightarama uses CAT5 commonly for their controllers to send data also, all over RS-45. So, here we have RS-45, and this is RS-232, so this is not really valid here. All right, so CAT5 is what we're referring to. I also mentioned that in some older technologies of DMX 1990, uh, three pin or five pin XLR cables are also used, but we're gonna focus on CAT5 since that seems to be the most common and cost effective and most used method. Now, what we do is in these two methods, we have to encode the data so that they're both talking the same language as we mentioned before. So, Ethernet would be the equivalent, let's say for example, like English and RS-45 might be the equivalent in Spanish. Again, just because they're going across the cable, they have to be able to speak the same language at each end. So, RS-45 has a fairly simple system you can see that there's a whole layer of sections missing here. And all we really have is a method of the physical layer and a method to transfer the data. So let's talk about RS-45 and why it's commonly used and why it's also called differential. Now, you may have heard also that these kinds of differential or long range receivers or expansion boards are differential. What does differential mean anyway? Well, differential has to do with the voltage. So, what we have here is we have zero volts, and then we have some number above that. Let's say up to 12 volts, though commonly five is used. So we have these different levels here, and what we're doing is we're sending out a signal. Now a data signal, a digital signal, is ideally something that looks like this and it's turning on and off and on and off. And so each one of these ons and each one of these offs is a bit of data. So it's on, off, on, off, and of course we can comprise larger pieces, words, and then whole pieces of data to make our signals. Now, um, with differential RS-45, we have a wider range of voltages. Uh, instead of just on a normal Ethernet connection, we might go up a few volts, and we might go up only a bit, and then up, and then up off of zero. So zero is the off, and then the upper voltage, 3.3 to 5 volts, is the on. Now, with differential, we can go much higher. We have two totally inverse voltages. So let's say we go up, and on is here, and then off is down here. So this is off, and this is on. So zero is not our off point. The inverse side, the differential side, is that off or on. So this allows us much higher voltages. 
Why does this matter? Well, think of your voltages as volume. So if you have somebody talking, and they're talking at a equivalency of a five volt volume. Well, if that's your baseline, you say, okay, that sounds, I can hear somebody. But what happens when the differential between five or even 12 volts, so let's just use five here, and negative five, because these are actually negative numbers, um, and these are positive numbers, now we have 10 volts of difference. So we have doubled the amount of volume. That means that if we have any kind of interference from the outside, so if there's something sending data like electromagnetic interference, like a high voltage wire, or if we're going very long distances, just like when you talk, if you yell, you can make your voice go further over longer distances than if you were to whisper. And so the equivalency is Ethernet is more about almost talking or whispering as where a differential signal used, for example, in RS-45 is yelling. Now, this is all good and you say, well, great, why does an Ethernet just do differential? Well, the problem is, is that it doesn't. Uh, it's not designed for those long distances. It's designed for speed. And so these uh, differential voltages are not common or not present in Ethernet. So RS-45, designed for the industrial world back in the 70s for equipment in very noisy factories where you have lots of equipment and high voltages like 480 volts, very commonly used and a great protocol. And if you need less than a megabit of bandwidth, which is a very small amount, by today's standards, not by 1970s, 80s, or 90s, or 2000, early 2000s standards, but by today's standards, that's not very much data. Now, that is why when these protocols, for example here, DMX 1990 in this dumb controller were invented or put into place, when they were inventing the protocol, the method they wanted to transfer data for DMX, they said, oh, what's out there? Ah, oh, we got this RS-45 and it's really great and it's got chips and all this great stuff. Let's just use that. And instead of using the protocol that they normally would have used, which would have been something like Modbus, which is an industrial protocol uh, similar to DMX 1990, um, what, what they did is they just said, hey, why don't we just use this uh, RS-45? We can send data really well. Now, this is also what LiDARAMA did when they invented their lighting controller back in the late 1990s. And they said, and rightfully so, looked around and said, hey, what protocols are out there? What method of transferring this data in a very robust way is out there? Uh, and that was RS-45. And in fact, uh, the person at runs the LiDARAMA said, wait, we could just use super cheap, even cheaper RJ11 telephone cable. So their goal was even cheaper than Cat5, which is kind of expensive back in the early 2000s. And telephone cable was even cheaper. That's why in a LiDARAMA control, you may see an additional jack for RS45, um, uh, for uh, RJ45, which looks like a phone connection. And of course now our Cat5 cable is so cheap, it's not even relevant. Now, that means that we have high level protocols running over the top of this interface. So right here, this UART is a pretty standard thing. It's just RS-45, it's just simply electrical data. How do we turn these bits on and off, on and off? Now, here's where we have the LOR protocol, the DMX 1990 protocol, or E111, uh, Modbus, like we have here, um, Renard, a whole bunch of different types of protocols sitting at this level. So what they've done is they simply said, oh, okay, this is a great way of sending data, but we like our own way of doing this. And so the way that uh, DMX LOR uses uh, the protocol over DMX, over 19, I'm sorry, over RS-45 is unique to them. Now, let's compare that over to modern controllers. So now, we have a much more sophisticated stack here, what's called the OSI model, on Ethernet. Because compared to, uh, to 
RS-45, it's pretty simple. You got a cable, you got a method of sending uh, some, turning some uh, bits on and off on the wire electrically, and then you have a way of sending, um, addressing the devices, saying which one is which number, and then the actual data that you're sending. Here you can see that we have in the OSI model, which is used by all modern controllers using ArtNet as the protocol at the high level. So here we have ArtNet, which is used by the holiday, I mean the lighting industry. And then we also have E131, or also called SACN. And then we also have DDP, which is a newer protocol. So all of these are at this application level. And we're not talking about that. We have another video that follows this one on how that works. So let's talk about this level in between. So let's go to a little bit more detailed diagram here. So here is the common Ethernet OSI model stack. So at the bottom, as we've mentioned, we have the physical Cat5 cable. And you can see that copper right there. And of course, we also talked in the prior video about wireless. All those are valid. You could even use uh, optical cable if you had to go very long distances and needed lots of data. Now, what's running across that? Well, back here, you can see that we had this UART, which is the signaling method. Those are the little chips that are on here, right there. Those chips are the UART chips. And in the equivalent, we have those on our controllers. So, in these devices, we have those chips. Now, they're actually underneath here, and you can't see them, but they're much more sophisticated. And what those do is they handle the Ethernet signal. Ethernet is just simply a method of exchanging data. As I said before in the prior video, it's sort of the English-Spanish thing. If everybody agrees that Ethernet, maybe let's say is equivalent to English, and as long as all devices that are connected together are Ethernet, it's all good. Now, all those devices using Ethernet here use TCP IP. Now you can see that they have TCP and IP. So IP is a sublayer, and TCP, which you commonly most hear connected with IP, TCP is simply a, a connection related device. Um, so what happens is, is we're doing all of our addressing, and those are things like you, you hear 192.168.0.0. 50, that's related to this. Now, the actual transfer of the data is in little packets of data. So once we figure out how to talk to the right devices on the network, we then have to package up the data. And we can do that in one of two ways. We can package it up in a TCP packet, which is kind of a guaranteed method. The data goes out across the network down here, and then it goes with some check bits to say, hey, did you get it? And then it says yes. And if any data was missing, it resends it. Now, UDP uh, is a protocol where the data just goes right out the network. There's no checking. It's fast. It's efficient. It's, uh, it's, it's commonly used in, let's say, media distribution. So if you have video streaming and those kinds of things, UDP is typically used. Now, up here, uh, let's miss that right there. Up here, we have the actual application session pre uh, presentation layer. And so let's just kind of talk mostly about this application layer. So at the top, we do have things like HTTP, which is your web browser, but we also have those other protocols we were talking about, like um, E131 or SACN or ArtNet and such. So those are all sitting up here in this application level. And we'll talk about those in a moment in the next video. So again, all these transport protocols are transferred over a specific physical media and that method of transferring the data electrically is specific to each type. The most two common being E or Art, I'm sorry, Ethernet or RS-45. All right, so our next video is going to talk about this application level and how we exchange data and the differences between those protocols.